Welcome to Luna Energy Facility, LEF. The video you are about to see has been developed to assist you in maintaining a safe and healthful work experience while you are here. It reflects our strong commitment to ensuring the health and safety of you as well as those around you while working at our facility. Our number one priority is the safety and health of plant and contractor personnel. This video will provide you with valuable and necessary information, including facility buildings and hazard areas, warning and informational signs, safe work requirements, and emergency procedures. At the conclusion of this video, you will be required to sign an acknowledgement form stating that you have reviewed and understand plant safety policies and procedures as presented in this video. This acknowledgement is good for the calendar year. You will get a sticker for your hard hat and then you will not need a site escort for the year. Let's get started. Throughout this video, you will hear references to your plant contact. Who is your plant contact? Your plant contact will be the Luna Energy Facility employee assigned to oversee your work at the facility. Your plant contact is responsible for your work at the facility and is your primary contact for information exchange in relation to the safety, health, and environmental requirements of this facility. Luna Energy Facility is an electric power generation facility in Deming, New Mexico, utilizing natural gas as its only fuel source. It is a complex facility consisting of several buildings and numerous major components, including an administrative building, where offices and the control room are located. Power block, including two gas turbines and one steam turbine. Maintenance shop. Warehouse. Water treatment area. Bulk chemical storage tanks. Cooling tower. Other off-site areas, which include 35 water wells and booster station. The nature of an electric power generation station presents numerous hazards that contractors must be aware of. This includes high voltage electricity, high pressure, high temperature steam and water, hydrogen, high pressure natural gas, hazardous chemicals, diesel and gas, and confined spaces. Safety equipment is located throughout the facility. This includes fire alarm pole stations, fire extinguishers, first aid supplies, chemical and oil absorbents, chemical and oil spill kits, emergency showers, and eyewash stations. Be sure to locate the safety equipment near your work area in case they're needed in an emergency. Note, there is non-potable water only in the warehouse. Let's take a brief tour of the facility to familiarize you with the basic layout and the location of hazardous areas. This is the control room. You are required to sign in and out each and every time you enter the plant. It is staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week and serves as the command center for facility emergencies and all operational activities. Here you will find the facility emergency response plans, safety data sheets, and environmental compliance plans. You may review these documents by requesting them through your plant contact. All work permits are issued through the control room. No facility-owned equipment is allowed to be operated by contractors. The use of LEF mobile equipment and tools is strictly prohibited unless permitted by plant management. Due to the significant risk of harm from unauthorized access, contractors and visitors shall not bring computers, laptops, tablets, or removable media to LEF and connect them to the facility systems unless expressly permitted to do so with documented management approval. Only LEF-provided scanned and documented hard drives or USBs will be used. Removable media devices include, but are not limited, to the following. External hard drives, USB, flash drives, and SD cards, CDs, and DVDs, 
iPods, iTouch, or similar devices, laptops, and other mobile computing devices, and any other data storage media. Firearms, drugs, or alcohol are prohibited on facility grounds at all times. Horseplay and aggressive behavior, either physical or verbal, is strictly prohibited. Violations of the LEF safety rules may lead to disciplinary action up to and including removal from the site. Smoking is allowed outside in the following designated areas. Behind the admin building and in the contractor parking lot. All contractor supervisors are responsible to ensure their on-site employees are properly trained in accordance with regulatory standards for the work they will perform. As a minimum, all on-site contractor personnel must be trained in hazard communication, personal protective equipment, confined space awareness, lockout tagout awareness, and basic electrical safety. Additional training such as fall protection, respiratory protection, and confined space entry may also be required depending on the scope of your work. As part of the safe work permit process, the contractor supervisor shall conduct and document a pre-job briefing with their employees before the start of the job and the start of each shift. At a minimum, the pre-job briefing must include hazards of the job, work procedures, special precautions, energy source controls such as lockout tagout, and personal protective equipment. All tools and equipment brought into LEF must meet all applicable standards. Hand and power tools must be in good condition with proper electrical cords. All factory guards and safety devices must be in place and in proper working order. Any electrical tools used outdoors or in a wet environment must utilize GFCI protection. Tools may not be modified without factory authorization. Tarps, masonite, and or cardboard should be placed over metal grating in order to prevent tools and material from falling through the grating and striking employees walking and or working below. Protection from falling debris and tools must be provided when working from scaffolding, elevated metal grating, and work platforms. Ladders used at the facility must be non-conductive and be rated for the intended load in service. Ladders must be inspected prior to each use. Ladders found to have defects must be removed from service and either tagged or removed from the site. When working from fixed and portable ladders, three-point contact must be maintained unless fall protection is utilized. All portable straight ladders are required to be tied off or supported while in use. When scaffolding is required, it shall be erected in compliance with OSHA standards by a competent person working at the request of the plant contact. A scaffold can be used only when it has been inspected and certified by a competent person for use with a signed certification and green or yellow scaffold tag at the scaffold access point, usually the ladder. LEF places a high priority on communicating hazards to employees, contractors, and visitors on site. This is primarily accomplished through signs and labels posted throughout areas of the facility. This includes signs indicating hazardous locations or areas, such as confined spaces and restricted areas. The need for specific protective equipment, such as hearing protection, hard hats, and safety glasses. The contents of pipelines and storage tanks, such as water, steam, natural gas, and hazardous chemicals. The limitations or restrictions on equipment or energy isolating devices and information regarding parking, access, and smoking restrictions. 
work resulting in an area being unsafe for general access, such as wet or slippery floors, overhead work, or hot work operations, must be cordoned off with appropriate barrier tape and signs. Yellow and black barrier tape is utilized to denote a hazard in the area, requiring caution to be used. Personnel should review hazards before crossing. Red and black barrier tape is utilized to cordon off a restricted work area. You are not allowed to enter such an area unless you are directly involved with the work. Red and black tape should be used sparingly. A sign or tag shall be attached to areas identified with barrier tape indicating the purpose of the barrier, the date the barrier was installed, and the person responsible for the barrier. Tags may be placed on equipment, such as ladders or scaffolds, to indicate they are not to be utilized. Always check for warning tags prior to utilizing any scaffolding or ladders at the facility. Always be aware of signage and labels posted in your work area, and heed the information and warnings they provide. Should an emergency occur during your work here, it is important that you take the correct and timely actions necessary to limit the potential impact of the emergency on the safety of yourself, plant personnel, and the operation of the facility. You must notify the control room immediately if you see any one of the following. Chemical or oil spill of any amount. Fire. And or medical emergency. When you are notified by plant personnel to evacuate the facility, you must safely make your way to the designated muster area, where your supervisor will conduct a head count. There are three muster areas that are located throughout the plant. They are designated by a windsock and a large yellow sign. They are located in the following areas. Primary, main gate. Secondary, behind the main warehouse, and behind the cooling tower laydown yard. Should you need to report an emergency, you must contact the control room immediately at 575-543-0492 or channel 1 on the two-way radio. Your call will be answered by a plant operator located in the control room. Following your call to the control room, Please follow the instructions provided by the control room operator. You may be requested to remain in the general area of the incident to direct responding plant personnel to the incident. Most LEF operational employees are trained and certified in basic first aid, CPR, and use of the facility automatic external defibrillator, as well as incipient stage firefighting and hazardous materials response. Facility personnel will respond quickly to all plant emergencies. All work-related injuries and illnesses must be reported to your plant contact as soon as possible after the occurrence of the incident. No one involved in an incident is to leave the site until released by your plant contact, unless they are being transported off-site for medical attention. A complete incident report must be completed before leaving the site for the day. LEF stores and utilizes numerous oils, hazardous chemicals, and compressed gases on site. These may be in the form of small quantity packaging, 55-gallon drums, chemical totes, and fixed bulk storage tanks. These hazardous materials include flammable and combustible liquids, corrosive materials, oxidizing agents, toxic or irritating materials, and flammable compressed gases. All chemical storage containers are clearly labeled showing the chemical name and primary hazards. These labels may consist of factory labels, HMIS labels, and NFPA 704 labels. All contractors operating at LEF have access to the facility's safety data sheets through their plant contact. Safety data sheets are made available to assist in identifying personal protective equipment requirements, first aid measures, and specific handling requirements. 
any contractor bringing chemicals on site must receive pre-approval through their plant contact and provide material safety data sheets prior to the chemicals being used on site. LEF may require specific handling procedures for some materials, including secondary containment systems and the availability of spill response materials. Hazardous chemicals, including flammable and combustible liquids, must be handled and stored in compliance with applicable regulatory standards. All containers must be clearly labeled with a product name and hazard statement in compliance with OSHA's hazard communication standard. If you transfer a chemical from its original container to another container, the secondary container must be labeled with the name of the material. The label must also identify all hazards associated with handling the material. Hazardous waste generated by a contractor must be handled in accordance with all regulatory requirements and may not be disposed of or stored on site without prior approval from the plant contact. Never dump oils, solvents, or other chemicals down a facility floor drain or sump. Report any chemical or oil release of any size to the control room, as these may be reportable to regulatory agencies within strict time frames. Specific personal protective equipment is required to be worn while working at this facility. All required equipment and training in its use must be provided by the contractor. A hard hat meeting the requirements of ANSI Z89.1 Class E or Class G and safety glasses meeting ANSI Z87.1 with hard side shields must be worn throughout the facility with the exception of the control room, administrative areas, and maintenance shop. Hearing protection is required to be worn in high noise areas. These areas are clearly marked at all entrance points. Hearing protection is required when the plant is in operation and when working with loud tools and machinery. Safety-toed leather work shoes with hard soles meeting the requirements of ANSI Z41 must be worn in all areas of the operating plant at all times. Task-specific protective equipment may also be required based upon the scope of your work at the facility. This may include the use of protective gloves, face shields and goggles, chemical protective clothing when handling hazardous chemicals, and filter lenses when welding or performing hot work. If a respirator is required, the respirator must be provided by your company. Respirator users must be medically approved to wear a respirator, properly trained, fit tested, and clean shaven. Additionally, contractors must wear pants and shirts made from natural or flame retardant fibers. Clothing that is made from synthetic fibers should not be worn in the plant unless appropriate for the task. Drivers are not allowed to offload or hook up to offload without the permission of a Luna Energy Facility employee. It is the driver's responsibility to provide their own PPE for the chemical they are to offload. The following are the chemicals, required PPE, and color-coded camlock fitting for offloading. Sulfuric acid, full face respirator, chemical suit, rubber gloves, and rubber boots. Orange camlock fitting. Sodium hypochlorite, full face respirator, chemical apron, rubber gloves, yellow camlock fitting, soda ash, lime, respirator on hand and common PPE, hydrochloric acid, chemical suit, rubber gloves and rubber boots, purple camlock fitting, ferric chloride, chemical apron, face shield and rubber gloves, sodium hydroxide, caustic, chemical suit, rubber gloves and rubber boots, blue camlock fitting, ammonium hydroxide, chemical suit, rubber gloves, and rubber boots.
Fall protection is required whenever work is performed from an elevated location which is four feet or more above a lower level. Fall protection may be in the form of a compliant guardrail system or through the use of fall arresting equipment such as a full body harness and deceleration device. When utilizing a fall arrest system, the equipment must be in good condition, the harness must be properly fitted, and the location of the anchor point must ensure the maximum freefall distance does not exceed four feet and can support the expected load in the event of a fall. Fall protection must also be utilized when working within the basket of an aerial device or elevating platform. This includes while driving the aerial lift equipment. All industrial vehicles used on the site, including excavators and forklifts, must be in proper working order and inspected according to the manufacturer's instructions every day prior to use. Industrial vehicles must be operated in strict compliance with applicable safety regulations, including the use of seat belts. The plant speed limit of 15 miles per hour must be observed while operating all motor vehicles on site. Any subsurface work performed at the plant requires approval. This includes digging, trenching, jackhammering, and post driving. The contractor must notify the plant contact, who will identify the job location, type of work being performed, and ensure that all approvals and requirements have been met prior to the start of any excavation work. All contractors are expected to maintain an orderly work area. Materials must be neatly stored with aisles, exits, and emergency equipment maintained clear of all obstructions. Emergency equipment includes fire extinguishers, sprinkler risers, emergency eyewash stations, and fire hydrants. All contractors must follow the following housekeeping requirements. Do not stage equipment in front of stairwells, ladders, doors, or any other points of access or egress. Do not block electrical equipment. The contractor must remove all debris and other trip, slip, or fall hazards from the work area. All contractors' housekeeping shall be subject to a visual inspection and final approval by an LEF representative. Flammable liquids must be stored in designated flammable storage lockers. Compressed gases must be stored in areas designated by your plant contact and properly stored and labeled. Contractors must ensure that all waste generated by the contractor is properly labeled, stored, and disposed of. Before beginning any work at the facility, you must obtain a safe work permit. Work permits are available through the control room and will identify the job location, type of work to be performed, and what safety precautions must be taken by the permit holder. The permit will also identify any additional permits required, such as confined space, hot work, and lockout tagout. Work requiring impairment of any fire protection equipment must be authorized by your plant contact. All confined spaces at LEF are clearly labeled. Should your work require you to enter a confined space, you must notify the control room. The control room will assist you in identifying the requirements of the space, reviewing the entry procedures, isolating and removing the hazards of the space, completing the entry permit, and discussing all aspects of the entry with you. All parts of the permit must be completed and the permit posted at the entry portal prior to entry. Entry into any permit required confined space must be performed in accordance with applicable OSHA regulations, including use of non-entry retrieval systems when applicable, attendance, and continuous atmospheric monitoring.
only individuals trained in confined space entry may serve as authorized entrance or attendance. Should an accident occur within a confined space, the control room must be notified immediately and the emergency response plan implemented. It is the responsibility of the contractor to provide emergency response services unless arranged through the plant manager well in advance of the work. Prior to any work involving welding, grinding, cutting, burning, heating, or any open flame, the contractor must notify the control room and obtain a hot work permit. The control room will identify the job location, the type of work being performed, and any additional safety precautions that must be taken prior to issuing a hot work permit. Hot work permits are prohibited from being moved from job to job. A new hot work permit is issued for each individual job involving hot work. The contractor will be required to supply a fire watch when hot work is being performed. When the fire watch is required, they must be posted during all activities and for a one hour post work period. Anytime welding is performed at the facility, the contractor must provide adequate shields, curtains, and tarps to protect passers by and those working and traveling below. Hazardous energy control is an important safety precaution at this facility. A lockout tagout procedure is designed to protect personnel from exposure to hazardous energies, including electrical, thermal, hydraulic, and pneumatic, as well as the accidental startup of the equipment or machinery being worked on. If you're working on equipment that requires lockout tagout, the control room will review the lockout with your supervisor. The control room will arrange to have all lockout tagout performed prior to the start of the work. Equipment that is under the control of lockout tagout shall be affixed with a lock and tag at all energy isolating devices, preventing the re energizing of the equipment. A designated plant operator shall perform all such isolations. Each day after the pre job briefing and prior to beginning work, the contractor or contractor supervisor, if many contractors will be on a lotto, will place their personal lock on the lockbox. Any device bearing a do not operate tag must not be operated at any time. The operation of any device tagged as danger do not operate will result in disciplinary action, including immediate dismissal and possible exclusion from any future work at this facility. You are required to ensure the lockout is in place at the start of each day. Lockout tagout will not be cleared until the contractor releases the equipment back to the plant. Contractors must notify the control room when work is complete or when leaving the plant site. Never work on any system once you have removed your lock from the lockbox device. Once you have cleared off the lockout, you are no longer authorized to perform work on the equipment. This concludes the video presentation. We appreciate your time and attention in viewing this video. We would like to leave you with the following thoughts as you begin your work at LEF. First and always, work safely. Each of us must make sure everyone goes home to their families every day in the same condition in which they came to work. Keep your sense of perspective. Let others judge your work because you're too close to it. Be open and willing to communicate safety hazards to your fellow employees, other contractors, and LEF employees. If you have any questions or concerns relating to your work here, please discuss them with your plant contact at this time. Thank you, and we are looking forward to you having a safe and productive experience at LEF.